Down by the Sutled shore, where sound the trumpet in the wild tum-tum, at winter's eve did come me a gaunt old northern lion, at whose roar the myriad howlers of thy wilds are dumb, blood-stained furrows are poor in the rich Indian night, and dreaming of his mate beyond the sea, toil-worn but grand to sight, he made his lair, in might, beneath thy dark palm-tree, and thou didst rouse him to the unequal fight and woe for thee for some of that wild land had heard him in the desert where he lay, and soon he snuffs upon their hurtling way, the hunters band by band, and up he gat in from the eastern sand and leapt upon his prey. Alas for man! Alas for all thy dreams, thy great somnambulist, wherein, outlawed from right and thought, thou workest out unawed thy grand fantastic fancies. Throw the flood, the pestilence, the whirlwind, the dread plain of thunders throw the earthquake and the storm, the deluge and the snows, the whirling ice of the wild glacier, every ghastly form of earth's most vexed vicissitudes of pain throw worlds of fire and seas of mingled bloods thou rushest, dreadful as a maniac god, and only finding that thou wert not sane when some great sorrow thunders at thy brain and wakes thee trembling by a precipice. Alas for thee, thy grey-haired man that still art sleeping, and canst hold thy grandchild high that he may see the gorgeous wrong go by which slew his father. And for thee, thou bright inheritress of summertime and light, alas for thee, that thy young cheek is flushed thee with dreaming of the lion and the foe though it had been yet paler than the snow upon the battle hill, if once had gushed thee, but once before thee, even the feeblest flow of that life's blood that swept in floods below. Alas! That even thy beauty cannot break the vampire spell of such a war dream's woe, alas! Though waking might have been to know things which had made it sweeter not to wake alas for man. Poor hunchback also proud and yet so conscious, man that stalks divine because he feels so mortal, speaking loud to drown the trembling whisper in his heart and wildly hurrying on from crowd to crowd, in hope to shun the faithful shapes that start wherever lake doth sleep or streamlet shine in silent solitudes. When once in youth fresh from the spheres, and too severely wise, truth drew the face he longed yet feared to view, stung with the instinct that confessed it true he dashed the tablets from her sacred hand, she drops her singing robes and leaves his land, and fiction, decent in the garb of truth, while lurking mischief lights her lambent eyes, seizes the fallen pencil, and with grave historic features paints the lies we crave, so war became a welcome woe. The grass grows tibidued upon a lonely grave, and we plant sad flows and sweet epitaphs, and every grief of monumental stone, above a single woe, but let men sleep in thousands, and we choose their hideous heap for joy to hold his godless orgies on is it that some strange laws unknown behest makes gladness of the greatest woes we have and leaves us but to sorrow for the less. Even as in outward nature light success is blindness, and intensest motion rest, or is it not O conscious heart declare that the vast pride of our o'er wrought despair, seeing the infinite grief, and knowing yet we have no tears to pay such deep distress, grown wild, repudiates the direful debt, and in its very bankrupt madness laughs. Yet when this victory's fame shall pass, as grand and griefless as a rich man's funeral, throw nations that look on with spellbound eye, while echoing plaudits ring from land to land, alas! Will there be none among the good and great and brave and free, to speak of all the pale piled pestilence of flesh and blood, the common cold corruption that doth lie festering beneath the pool? Alas! When time has deified the thought of this day's desperate devilry, and men who scorn to inherit virtue, but will ape their sires, and bless them, when they sin, shall shape ye graven image of the thought, and then fall down to worship it will no one dare, while nations kneel before the idol there, to stand and tell them it is juggernaut alas for man. If this new crime shall yield to truth no harvest for the size it cost, if this crowned corpse, this pale incepted ghost that stalks, for Rosa poor, from thy red field robed as a king, shall all unchallenged pass down the proud scene of time. Alas, alas if there are some to weep and some to pray, and none to bow their humbled heads and say, low sighing, there hath been a mortal strife, and thirteen thousand murdered men lie there, and day and night upon the tain to dare blaspheme the Lord of life.